Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you again tonight and we just thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for all those that were able to attend tonight. Father God, we pray for a good internet connection, that the connection would be smooth, that we'd have a, a, a clear video and also audio, Father God. We also pray that during this time as we study the truths about your, uh, your Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, Father, I just pray that you'd give us uh, you to in, illuminate our eyes, illuminate our minds, that we can understand what the truths are. And Father God, we, we ask that you would continue to fill us with your spirit, that we, we would be teachable and humble and led by your Holy Spirit. Father God, we, we trust in you and we thank you so much for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Your pr presence is forever with us. We just uh, commit this time to you. It's in Jesus' name, our Lord and Savior, we pray all these things. Amen. Before we actually begin, I did want to just go over the, the Facebook groups just to show you a couple of things in case uh, you were not aware. So before we go into the, to the lecture tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, I want to share with you several things. So, so here we have our, our Eastern Messiah School of Theology group, uh, private group, and we're, and we're posting content here. And the one thing I wanted to draw your attention to is if you come over here to the left, if you look under files, when you click on files here, if you can see this, all of the files become categorized <laughs> here. So I have to make an adjustment because some of them are not in, in order. I'm trying, I'm trying to retroactively uh, put them in chronological order. But instead of trying to scroll all the way down under discussions, trying to find an old file or something like that. If you try looking through things, if you come to here, all of the files will be present. They're easy to download. The other thing is that I, I will update some of them. And when I update them, you will have the new, the new file there. So that's just an FYI for you to help you with, with, with if you're looking for an old file. So just remember it's under files. So instead of looking through everything, so later on we'll put the application, we'll, we'll do a revised application. There's the, if you can see the student weekly report, you have the PDF, you have the docx file if you want. So everything is here, it's very nice. Um, and the other thing too is that some of the notes I've been sharing JPEG, moving forward they will all be, they will, they will all be PDF. So PDF, all the notes will show up here as well. So for example, the most recent notes that we just did, uh, I just clicked on it and then we have, boom, it's there. And if you're using Google Chrome on your computer, you can literally just come over here to the top right, click, print. I have my brother set up, boom, I can just print it just like that, okay? So it's really accessible or you can just download. So I'm just gonna click download and it's telling me how to save it and I can save it. So very nice, very easy. Uh, just, just a reminder in case you were unsure about the notes. So I do need to go back and reorganize them, but they will all be there, okay? Um, any questions or comments? I just wanted to, to, to bring your attention to that. And um, what I think we're actually gonna be doing, Henry, uh, maybe, we'll have several different groups with EVST so that with the different classes, it doesn't become so confusing. So anyway, it's free. So anyway, Siggy, Siggy. Um, but uh, I hope it could be a blessing for you. Okay, so going into our study for tonight, we are studying, uh, here's our partnerships and uh, I-team and then also Converge and interpreting the word and uh, Ati Lizel, I always mess up, Lizel, she sent me the, the updated Lord's Har Harvest, so I will add the Lord's Harvest logo here, black, so it's going to look nice. Uh, so these are the partners that we're partnering with, and uh, here we are to chapter number five, Knowing God, the Holy Spirit. We are, I believe, halfway through, halfway through this first, this first course, uh, Knowing God, the Holy Spirit. And so tonight, we have multiple texts. I pray that we can get through this. We won't be going as deep like we did last week when we really investigated Colossians 1, 13 to 23. We'll be looking at multiple passages, more of a, a bird's eye view 
because with uh, in, in the scripture, the Holy Spirit, the, the texts are not as deep concerning the Holy Spirit. It's more a lot of different passages that we bring together to synthesize to see who the Holy Spirit is, the work of the Holy Spirit. So just continue, continuing on here, the learning approach, as we said before, we are learning things with our head. We're learning, we're putting that head knowledge into our heart and we're applying it to the Christian life. And then we're using it with our hands in the life of the church. And so we're, we're moving from head, heart, hands. And it's both, an in, there's an individual component and there's also a, a corporate component, meaning to say that we serve others individually, but we also serve the body of Christ. And so uh, the format of the course is lecture, homework, group meetings. I hope the group meetings are going well for you. And then also this mentor-mentee relationship. I hope there's a plan. I hope there's a plan for you to meet with some of your, your uh, mentees or disciples. But I hope that you're planning to meet uh, in the next month or so. So we've, June is finished. So the report should be once every two months. So by the end of July, first week of August, I hope to have your first reports. And then uh, just an overview for the lecture. The objective. We have one objective tonight to become familiar, not to become a master, but to become familiar with fundamental truths concerning the Holy Spirit. And so our goal tonight, uh, a lot of these things might be similar to I-Team Chapter 5, but, but they're complementary, okay? So some of the things that we'll be teaching tonight are not in I-Team. And I did that by design. I didn't want to teach the same things that you're going to be investigating in I-Team. So these are, these are some of the the things that, 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 that were on my heart. I am taking some of my notes from, if you've heard of um, Wayne Grudem's Systematic Theology, Wayne Grudem's Systematic Theology, I, I'm pulling from that. I would actually recommend Wayne Grudem's Systematic Theology. It's very easy to read, and it's, it's an, an excellent resource. Henry, there's, there's a copy. There's a copy in the bottom, Wayne Grudem. So, <laughs> so uh, but anyway. Maybe later on, once we've really grown, we can get some more copies because that's really a very good systematic theology. It's not perfect, but there's a lot of good truths there, and it's easy to read. It's one of the easier systematic theologies to read. Um, okay, so I do want to just quote from a, a historic creed. Again, we're only quoting this in as far as it's accurate with what the Word of God says about the Holy Spirit. So this is taken from the Westminster Confession of Faith slash the Baptist Confession. So this statement here is the same in both confessions. And um, this would also be similar to earlier confessions. And so what we're doing is just summarizing what church doctrine says concerning the Holy Spirit. And so this is actually synthesizing all three, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In the unity of the Godhead, there be three persons of one substance, power, and eternity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Father is none, neither begotten nor proceeding. The, Spirit, the, the, the Son is eternally begotten of the Father. The Holy Spirit is eternally proceeding from the Father and the Son. And so there's a lot more that can be said, but this is emphasizing uh, the fact that there's three persons, but one substance, one, one, uh, one God, three persons. Okay, and so this really, the, 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 the issue with begotten and pro, eternally proceeding, uh, that would be for the next level. <laughs> so I know I, if you want to ask a question, maybe we can discuss after, but, but that is more, that's very deep. That would be for like a master's level discussion. The importance for us is that, is that um, we accept that there's three persons of the Trinity, um, but there's one God. Okay, that is really the big, the big, uh, the unique, the, the absolutely fundamental truth that we need to accept. And, um, and there is distinction between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the Father is, uh, is unique in function, not in being, in function, in, in what he's doing compared to, to the Son, compared to the, the Holy Spirit. So anyway, uh, I won't say anything else concerning that. And then uh, tonight what we are going to be focusing on is 
Uh, so now we just have a basic definition of who this, the Holy Spirit is. It's the third person of the Trinity. So he is uh, God himself. And at the same time, he has a specific role to play for us. Uh, and so I, tonight we're going to be focusing on what the Holy Spirit does. What does the Holy Spirit do? <laughs> okay. What are some of these actions? So, so again, this is not comprehensive. There is a lot more we could go into depth talking about the Holy Spirit in, in, in deeper classes. You could even have a whole class on the work of the Holy Spirit, who he is, the Holy Spirit from the Old Testament and the New Testament. There is so much. There is so much. So I'm just giving you uh, some foundational truths concerning the Holy Spirit, and for sure we can do a lot more, okay? So what I, I'm going to break this down into four major things. There are four major things that the Holy Spirit does for us, okay? There are four major things. And then within those major categories, sometimes there, is a, there are multiple descriptions within the category. So, so you're going to have, if you can imagine the outline, it will be A, B, C, D, and then you'll have some subpoints, like one, two, three with an A, maybe one, two with an B. So you'll have some subpoints. So the outline will be A, Sub point one, two, three, B, C, D, like that. Okay, so what does the Holy Spirit do? Letter A, the Holy Spirit empowers. The Holy Spirit empowers. What does that mean? What does that entail? We're going to investigate that tonight. We're going to, we're going to study that tonight. But the first thing I want us to see is that the Holy Spirit empowers. And this is a, found, a fundamental activity of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer, okay? Number two, or letter, I should say letter B. Letter B, the Holy Spirit sanctifies. What does that mean? So we're going to investigate what, what does this, this mean, the, 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 sanctific, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit concerning uh, sanctification. Next, the Holy Spirit reveals. The Holy Spirit reveals. So, so we will be investigating some of the things that the Holy Spirit reveals, okay? And then lastly, the Holy Spirit unifies. The Holy Spirit unifies. So there is a lot more, even as I, even, even as I share this, um, there is a lot more that we could add. Um, and uh, I think there's other things that are going to be added in, uh, in I-Team Chapter 5. This is Christianity 101, so for sure, we will miss some things. Maybe some people says, oh, that should be fundamental. Why did you not include that? Fair enough. But the reality is we have one class and we just don't have enough time. So I'm trying to focus on the, on the most important truths that will help, again, because not only for, for us, but when we're using this in discipleship, these are basic foundational truths, okay? So moving along here, the first major point is the Holy Spirit empowers. The Holy Spirit empowers. So what does that mean? Uh, number one, when we're talking about empower, the first thing I want us to see is that he gives life. The Holy Spirit gives life. This is a fundamental function of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to look at several passages of what this entails. Let's go, let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 3, verses 5 to 7. John chapter 3, verses 5 to 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read, just to set up the context, I'm going to read John chapter 3, verses 1 to 7, but we will not be investigating the entire passage. We're going to be focusing on the, on the latter portion, and there's a lot more that we can be learning. But I just want to focus right now this idea that the, 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 the Holy Spirit gives life. Reading from the word of God, thus says the word of the Lord. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, or Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God because no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born again, he cannot see 
the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of, the wa of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed, do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Okay, so this is a very powerful text. Let me just um, look up something here real quick. I need to get my notes out here. Okay, great. Okay, so very powerful text. Diva. Can everyone, am I still screen sharing? Can everyone see me? Can everyone see the screen? So I just want to make sure I'm still screen sharing. Diva, Tamaba. Everyone can see the screen? Yeah, that, we can, okay. we can, see, we can okay. see the screen sharing. I had an error and I was, I was, I was afraid for a second. <laughs> okay, good. All right, so this, this is a fundamental passage for conversion, and we use this, uh, we use this in, in sharing the gospel, and uh, uh, a lot of truths here. I just wanna, well, I want to focus on the work of the Holy Spirit. So there's a lot that could be said. We don't have, we can't deal with everything that's said. Let's just begin back up here at Nicodemus, making the statement. Nicodemus makes a very, he makes a statement um, and Jesus pushes back on him, okay? So he, he, he gives an acknowledgement here. He says, uh, Rabbi, so this is a reference to, to Jesus being a teacher. He calls, he calls him Rabbi. We know that you're a teacher come from God, right? So, so he's acknowledging that Jesus has has come from God and the and the reason for this is the reality this is the explanation is that he's doing these great signs so Jesus is doing these great signs and these signs indicate that God is with him so although although Nicodemus is not calling Jesus God. He's recognizing that this is coming, that Jesus is, 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 has come from God, okay? Now, what's so interesting here is that Jesus' immediate response to Nicodemus is really powerful, right? If ever there was someone who is going to be a part of the, of the kingdom of God, who's going to be part of the Jewish kingdom, Diva, look at how, look at how, Nicodemus is introduced, Diva. He is number one. He is a Pharisee. Number two. He is a ruler of the Jews. Okay? And number three, the fact that he is named, this is significant. He is, he, uh, he was a prominent He was a prominent religious leader, okay? So this is not someone off the street. This is not for someone from the Sanhedrin. This is not a Roman. This is, this is someone who would be in, Diva. This is someone who would be, who would be uh, uh, guaranteed to be a part of the kingdom, right? And he's even acknowledging that Jesus is from, Jesus has come from God. So if ever there is a time for Jesus to give maybe a stamp of approval or like, yes, Nicodemus, uh, Thank you. Uh, let's, you can be a part of, you know, something along those lines. Maybe Nicodemus is, is hoping that Jesus is the Messiah. But Jesus' response is this. Uh, truly, truly, I say to you, unless someone is born again, and this word here, this is a word play here. 
this could be born again or born from above. Or it's from above. So whereas, uh, whereas Nicodemus thinks he's automatically in, Jesus automatically excludes him, Diva. There's this condition that has to be met. It doesn't matter that Nicodemus is from this prominent uh, group of leaders, Christian or uh, religious leaders, the Pharisees. It doesn't matter that he's a ruler of the Jews. It, obviously, his name meant something if, for the author to specify Nicodemus. He probably was from a very prominent family. He's probably well known in the Jewish community. That is, means nothing to Jesus. Now, I want to emphasize something here. The combination of this, the fact that Jesus is uh, right here, he is actually, um, uh, Jesus is prophet, priest, and king, okay? But the, the fact that he's going to say, truly, truly, I say to you, um, this is uh, Jesus speaking as a prophet. He's going to give this um, prophetic pronouncement, okay? This would be called a prophetic pronouncement. And you have this in, 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 um, in uh, this is a, uh, a typical structure that emphasizes, the purpose of this is to, is to emphasize, emphasize the certainty of the statement, okay? So when, when Jesus uses uh, these, these, this like, uh, like um, group of words, okay? So you have one, two, three, four. The combination of these four and the fact that he is Jesus is a prophet. Now, he's more than a prophet. He's also a priest. He's also a king. But these five things, this is a prophetic pronouncement. So Jesus will, will pronounce woes. That's a prophetic pronouncement. You see this in the Old Testament. So, so what, what, what is to follow is very significant, um, and it's certain, okay? And so what, what, what is to follow is this statement, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So there's, some, there's a work that has to be done to, to this person before he can see the kingdom of God. Okay, does everyone understand? Oh, a man cannot birth himself. And, and, and Nicodemus is going to, Nicodemus is going to, to mock, in a, in, in a way, mock Jesus. Now people would say, oh, he was being legitimate. No, I mean, he could have been being sincere, but it seems that he's being sarcastic with Jesus. And so Nicodemus gives a rhetorical question. This is a, this is a question, Diba. The question in response is, how can a man be born when, is, when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And so Nicodemus is, is this is showing Nicodemus' unbelief at this point. Okay. He's not taking Jesus' words by faith. He's not saying, oh, explain this to me. I want to learn. He, he is kind of uh, being very negative. There's a, uh, we can be negative in our questions, Diva. <laughs> uh, and so there is, a, there is a sense of unbelief here, okay? Watch Jesus' response, okay? So, um, so, so the verbiage here is, can he enter, Diva? Can he enter a second time to be born? So this, he's like, is it possible to enter again? Watch what Jesus says. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he can never enter the kingdom of God. Now, cannot enter, this is actually, uh, this is the best translation I would encourage you to put in your Bible is can he can never enter. This is the strongest way you say no 
<laughs> inability in Greek. Uh, and so the English doesn't quite, doesn't quite capture it. Jesus says, so he repeats the prophetic announce, pronouncement and actually adds to it. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he will never enter <laughs> the kingdom. So Nicodemus is like, can he enter? Jesus is like, if you don't, if you're not born of water and the spirit, you will never enter the kingdom of God. Okay. Now there is debate. There is debate concerning what this means precisely. I'll take the more traditional view and say, this is a reference to, you know, this is a reference to flesh and this is a reference to uh, spiritual, spiritual birth. Uh, uh, sorry, um, birth by the Spirit. Birth that is caused by the Spirit, okay? Now, some people, I mean, people do say this is a reference to the New Covenant in Ezekiel. We'll, <laughs> we'll discuss that some other time. So at this point, we'll just reference going along here with the connection here, if everyone can see the, the connection here. So... Jesus is going to explain, unless one is born of water and the spirit, that, that which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of spirit is spirit, okay? So, so again, there's debate in verse, in verse 5, but we're just going to run with the traditional interpretation, which is uh, there's physical birth, and then there's spiritual birth, okay? Birth by the spirit. And then Jesus gives him a command. The command that Jesus gives him, let me just take a pause. Is everyone tracking with me so far what, what is going on right now? Every, everyone, it makes, it's making sense. Does someone want to ask a question? It says here that unless you are born by water and of spirit, what signalizes water here? Is it in baptism or upon birth? Yeah, so that's where I'm saying there's debate. So there's debate there. Is it is it baptism? Is it birth? Is it a reference to the to the new covenant in 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 Ezekiel? It describes in the new covenant that we're going to be um, we're going to be uh, washed in our heart. We're gonna with water, okay? And, and the spirit is going to be put inside us. So people will also say that this is a reference to the new covenant. So I don't want to really because that's a peripheral issue. The traditional most uh, common interpretation is that of water refers to, to physical birth. And, and the connection is here. Uh, the connection is here. This reference, which is born of the flesh. So when you're born with the water, that's a born of the flesh. And then that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Okay. So, so people will say is, what they'll say, Kapatid, is this. They'll say, this explains this. Born of flesh, of water. Born of spirit, of the spirit. That's a good interpretation. I mean, this would be an area where there's going to be debate, and if you cho chose something different, that's fine. Um, I think the Catholics might, or, or someone who has believed in baptismal regeneration would say maybe this is this is a reference to to baptismal regeneration, I would say that's a, you, you should not, I mean, people take that interpretation, but I would not, I, I would say that would be a, a, a wrong interpretation, but, but there is debate. That, that's a peripheral, that is a, a tangential, it's, 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 it's a side issue. The focus for us is this idea of being born of the spirit, okay? Coming down here, Jesus says, do not marvel, do not be amazed. So we have this command. We have this command, do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. Now, now people will use this, they will take this as a command. Diba, tamaba, people will say this is a command. Diba, they'll say it's a command, right? They'll say, you must be born again. So as if, as if to say, almost as if you're the one who can does it can do it. Now, maybe that's not their intention, but, but that's what some people will say. It's almost as if this is also something that we must do. 
Has everyone heard that before? Sometimes, yeah. The, the, the issue, though, is that Jesus is not focusing on us birthing ourselves. He's merely stating that you have to have this new birth if you are to be a part of the kingdom. Literally, this, is, this would be, uh, it is necessary. It is necessary to be born again. Literally, it is necessary. Do not be amazed that I said it is necessary it, you, that you be born again. Okay, and again, this reference here is born from above. Both, so the word, it's, it's a word play, okay? In one sense, you're being born again, Diva, but also born from above. Why are you being born from above? Uh, because it's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit, okay? Now, what I want us to see here is that the focus, the focus here, the focus is upon the need for a new birth, okay? In this passage, the focus is upon this need for a new birth. And it's a new birth that is coming from heaven, okay? Later, Paul will refer to this as the new creation. We are new creatures. The old has passed, the new has come, okay? Uh, so, so before we draw conclusions, I do want to finish what's being said here, because then Paul's going to explain what he means. Look at what he then says. He explains it. Look at verse 8. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Number one, we, we have this action here, Diba. Number one. The wind blows where it wishes. What's another word for, for, for let's look at this phrase here where it wishes. What's another word for this? Does someone want to give me another word? If, if you're using maybe Tagalog or English, uh, what's another word for wish, wishes? Where, where it wishes. NIV. Yeah. It pleases. Yes. Okay, good. Pleases. Wherever it pleases. Good. A anyone else? Could we not say desire? Where it desires? Anong gusto mo, right? What do you want? What is your desire, di ba? The, the, the focus is on uh, the, the actor here. It is referring to wind, di ba? Now, we know in 21st century that, of course, the wind, the wind there's a pattern, di ba? There's, there's pattern, there's pressure differences. There's weather patterns, okay? But J Jesus is not giving us scientific facts concerning the, 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 he's using an analogy, a, a physical analogy, and especially in a pre-scientific world, the wind, it, it's, it does seem to blow where it wants to go, Diva. So uh, this is not a scientific investigation. The truth for us is that the wind, the, the wind as the actor, acts the action where it desires <laughs> the wind chooses where it wants to go does everyone see that the wind is the one choosing okay the, the wind goes where it wants the next thing we see is that we hear we hear it sound we we hear the sound or we hear its effect we could say sound or effect. 
So, so we, we, we can hear the effect of the wind. So this is the, the second action. Okay, so action number one, action number two. But there's a contrast. But there's a knowing statement here. What is the knowing? Where it comes from? Where it comes from. Or where it goes. <laughs> now, to add to this, Manga Kapitid, the word for wind in Greek is the same word for spirit. <laughs> so a Greek person would see it's the same word. I think in Hebrew too, it's the same word. The spirit blows where it wishes. You hear his sound. You do not know where he comes from or where he goes. <laughs> so it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. So I want to, I want to, if everyone does, if everyone, does everyone see this great truth here? Does everyone see this great truth here? I want to I want to draw a couple significances here concerning this. Okay? And we're going to go to some other passages now. We're going to jump around. We're not going to go into detail like this. Uh but I do want to emphasize here. So this is this is the uh if we're coming here, we This is the explanation, and then this is the conclusion, or the, we could also say this is the illustration, the illustration, okay? So I want to draw some significances. There are some very profound truths here. Uh, we're going to draw everything in together. So, so let's just go ahead. I'm going to draw some. These are some uh, some theological truths. Number one, the spirit gives life. Diba, where do we see the spirit giving life? In the text, Manga Kabatid, where do we see the spirit giving life? Verse 3. Can you read it? Verse 3, Jesus replied, uh, Jesus declared, I tell you that no one can see the kingdom unless he is born again. Yeah. When, when a child is born, we say that he, it, it's a life, Diba. It's, it's a life that comes into the world. And so the spirit gives life and the specific the specific place we see that is wherever it's referring to born again or born from above. So the first thing we see, the work of the Spirit, the absolute important fundamental work of the Spirit is that he gives life, uh, and it's only those who have this life that will enter the kingdom of God. Okay? So that's the first truth. The fundamental truth that Jesus is teaching us here is the Spirit gives life. Uh, bo bo uh, ethnic births, born on ethnicity, does not matter. Born in social class, does not matter. Born in a prominent family, does not matter. Um, uh, Jewish, American, does not matter. Son of Abraham, doesn't matter. What matters to enter God's kingdom, to be part of God's uh, eschatological final kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of David, the kingdom is this new birth. And it's the spirit that gives life. Okay. Number two, number two, the spirit The spirit cannot be manipulated. 
or we could say we cannot manipulate the spirit. Now, maybe we won't do this intentionally, but sometimes we do. Sometimes we we try to be the spirit of God for someone else, Diva. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we try to manipulate the spirit for our own for our own purposes. I want to emphasize here, according to verses eight, the spirit blows where he wishes. He is the one in control, and this is in this is in continuity with the fact that God is in control, okay? I'm not minimizing our human responsibility. Later on, we're going to see the, the, the command of Jesus, if we are studying John 3, for us to believe, okay? So, so we're not minimizing that. We have this call always to believe, but the Spirit, we cannot manipulate the Spirit. And so uh, we need to be very careful of that. The third thing I want us to see here is that the Spirit, the Spirit's, Presence and giving of life, or we could say effect, we could also say effect, is undeniable. Undeniable. Do we see the effects of the wind? Pastor Noli, did you see the effects of the wind last month? Yeah. Sabagyo, diba? Yeah. We saw the effects. If we see the effects of the physical wind every time, Sigurado, we hear it, we see it, we see the winds blowing, we see the winds blowing down, diba? If we yeah. see the effects of the physical wind, how much more the spiritual wind, the breath of God. So there are some people that you are working with, I have the spirit, and they're living like the devil. <laughs> they're living like there's been no effect. We, we hold on to these truths. This, these are theological truths. This helps us as we deal with sin. This helps us as we deal with discipleship. Someone who is caught in a sin. Uh, the, the effect of the conviction of the Spirit, the, the effect of the new birth, the effect of, we'll see later, the sanctification of the Spirit. Undeniable. Every time you hear or see the wind, think, that's how the Holy Spirit works. Any comments or thoughts? Let, let's just take a moment here. Let's just reflect on this. Any, any comments or thoughts? In the effect, the effect is the fruit. You can see the fruit, right? Okay. Yes. Excellent. So here, the act of the spirit, the blowing, the ba, that's the new birth. Okay. And then the effect, the effect is uh excellent. Fruit. Now, what kind of fruit? Who, who just, what do we call this fruit? Is there, there's, there's a famous name, the fruit of, <laughs> of the spirit, Diva. We're going to investigate this soon. The fruit, or we could say the fruits of the spirit, Diva. We're, this is going to be in Galatians. 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 The fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Yeah. Yeah, Galatians, Kuya. Yeah, yeah, Tama, 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 yeah. We're going to go there. We're going there. So we're going to see that soon, okay? But So any other comments or questions? Does someone want to add to this? Does someone want to ask a question? Please don't feel ashamed if you'd like to add, add a comment. I have a comment there, Pastor. Go ahead, go ahead. A man or a woman who does not have the Holy Spirit is not a Christian. Do you do you agree with me? Yes, Tama. He is not a Christian if he does not have the Holy Spirit. Yes. Because God had promised 
to send the Holy Spirit. Yeah. No, that's that. So yes, Kapatid, it's here. Unless you are born from above, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So the new birth yeah. and the result of the new birth is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Okay. The, the, the Holy yeah. Spirit births you anew and then he indwells you. So if you do not have the new birth, if you do not have the Holy Spirit, you are not a believer. Sigurado. Sigurado. So therefore, if we do not have the Holy Spirit, then it's nothing. Yeah. We are not of his. Yeah. According to Romans. Are you looking at my notes? <laughs> no. Because last Sunday, that was my preaching in the church. So, 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 Romans, so, 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 Romans where? So, yeah. Romans 8, diba? Romans 8? Yeah, Romans 8. <laughs> 1 to 10. Yeah, okay, we're going there, Mama Yat. We're going there, Mama Yat. So you're, you're stealing my thunder. <laughs> Yeah. Sticky, sticky, sticky. Good. Okay. Any other comments or questions? So, uh, any, yeah, I, let me just give a moment here if anyone else wants to make a comment. Observation. Go ahead. So, it is the discretion of the Holy Spirit to whom he wants to save. That is a whole other can of worms that we need to, that we need to, dis, we, we could discuss. But yeah, so, so based upon this, yes. one, one, one uh, perspective, one theological is that, yes, at the end of the day, it's God, it's, the, it's God who is sending his spirit. It's the spirit who is the one doing it. So it's his choice. Yeah. So that's, that is what, that is, uh, uh, and then others will say, no, the Holy Spirit blows upon everyone and they call it provenient grace. So those are the two options. Uh, that's deep, though. <laughs> yeah, as, far as, verse, as far as this verse is concerned, but, but, uh, but in, there is also another work, which is the work of Jesus Christ, who will allow the Holy Spirit yeah. to move it. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, this is something we all have to wrestle with competition. It's a great observation. It's a great observation. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll share my, my perspective is that I would agree with, with what this text is saying. I, you know, I feel the text is very clear that it, it's the wind that blows where he wishes. You hear it sound. So I would hold to that position. Other people disagree and there's different perspective. Fair enough. But the, the importance that I, I think we should really agree to Manga Kapitan is that we cannot manipulate the Holy Spirit. So especially in evangelism, our job is to proclaim the gospel to every creature. Our job is not to be the Holy Spirit. Our job, this Holy Spirit moves in the person as God wills, as he wills. That's what the, I, I believe this is to be saying. But we don't, we're not discretionary. We preach the gospel to everyone. We pray for everyone. We pray that the Holy Spirit will work in everyone's lives. Th those are not negotiable things. So I pray everyone that I meet or if I'm praying for someone, I don't say, I don't know if the Holy Spirit's going to blow in his, no, no, that's not mine. We, we pray for him. We pray that the spirit would move. We, absolutely. You know, so, so there is, there is bad interpretations. There's bad going down the wrong path, but I do think your observation competent is accurate that the Holy Spirit, it's his will. I, I think that is, I think you're, you're really accurate there with that. And we have to wrestle with that. We have to accept it. We have to submit to that reality. But um, we don't take it to the next degree saying, I don't know if I'm going to pray. I don't know if I'm going to share. Maybe the Holy Spirit will not. Um, yeah, uh, we, we don't do that. We, we preach to everyone. We pray for everyone without prejudice, without discretion. So, good. Let, let's move on because we are we, we we do have we do have a lot to get through here. So um, uh, let's let's go back to our PowerPoint here. I don't think we have time to go to these other passages, but I'll give a moment if you want to write down these passages. And these are other passages that describe the Holy Spirit, the new birth. They describe the Holy Spirit. Literally, John six sixty one to sixty four. Jesus says. 
Uh, the flesh is of no value. It's the spirit who gives life. Uh, Romans 8, 9 to 17, where uh, Pastor Noli was, was, was referencing. Later, we will go there. But um, Romans 8, 9 to 17, if the Holy Spirit dwells within you, then you will be resurrected. We'll see that, that mama ya. Um, so these are other passages that we can go to that really emphasize this fundamental action of the Holy Spirit, that he is the one who gives life to us. And we need life before we can do anything for God. We must have life. Uh, Rome, Ephesians 2, right? We were dead in our trespasses and sins. So our condition prior to is, is one of death, of spiritual blindness. And so we need the Holy Spirit to breathe life into us. Secondly, he equips for service. So we're looking at this word empowering, okay? And so the second thing we see here is that the Holy Spirit, he equips for service. Let's examine 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. So please turn with me to your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 11. And I'm actually going to begin in verse 4. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 to 11. Now there are varieties of gifts. There are many different gifts but the same spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God, there's the word, who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. For to one is given the spirit, the utterance of wisdom, to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All of these are empowered by one and the same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. <laughs> so it sounds very similar. It sounds almost the same as John 3, diba? Right? Almost the same, but it's in a different area now. So this actually is a stronger case for that observation that Kuya Henry made, that the, the spirit is the one that is the one willing, because here, this is, in, in the first case, it's giving life. The spirit is in control, diba? Right? He wills. Here, it's the giving of gifts, and again, he wills. So let's, let's, let's unpack this quickly. And, and let's draw some significance here. Now, I do want to say several things. In this section, I want to, I want, I'm looking at two things. Number one, I'm looking at the Spirit is the one who equips. So in, 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 the, in, in the Spirit empowering us to do the will of God, to live holy and pure lives. Number one, he, we have to have life. And number two, we have to be equipped. So again, the Spirit is the one behind us being able to do what we're called to do, okay? And the second thing I want us to see here is that in this passage, we see the Spirit being equated with God. So let's see if we can find that as well. So those are the two truths that we're looking for here. And so the first thing I just want to identify is this idea that there are a variety of gifts, okay? So uh, we, have, we have the state. This is the state, Diba. And there are, there are a variety of gifts, so there isn't one gift, there isn't two gifts, there's many different gifts, okay? But the contrast here, among the is that there is only, uh, even though there's, there's many different gifts, there's one spirit. So even though there's many different gifts, there's one spirit, it's the same spirit who's giving the different gifts. So this can, we can talk about that there must be maybe a unity, there, uh, we talk about unity and uh, uni unity in diversity. There isn't confusion. And th these, th this will be further unpacked elsewhere in First Corinthians towards the end of the uh, towards the end of the chapter. Okay, I'm mean, just at this point. I'm just highlighting some things. So again, you have similar. 
you have this, again, the state, and again, you have varieties of service, but then there's, again, the same Lord, right? So you have this, this again, the unity in diversity, okay? You have the unity in diversity, okay? And there are, again, varieties of activities, okay? But what do we have again? The same God. So in each case, there's different functions, but there is unity, okay? There is this uh, oneness. And I'm saying this not in a heretical Pentecostal oneness move, but there is this unity. There is this oneness, okay? And then we see the description here. The description is this, the same God who empowers everyone, okay? The same God who empowers everyone, okay? And we see this. Uh, we cannot do, we cannot act in service. We cannot do our gifts without the empowerment of God. So he is the one behind our action, okay? And hence the main, the main point, the Holy Spirit empowers, okay? Now, I'm just going to highlight and move through here quickly because my purpose is not to investigate the different gifts. We have a whole other class in I-Team for the gifts, okay? So we will not look at the gifts. I just want to draw your attention to manifestation of the Spirit is given through the Spirit, okay? So the Spirit is the one who is giving, Viva. the manifestation, or this, this would be revealing, revealing. Uh, again, you have, according to the same spirit, the utterance of knowledge. Another faith. The gifts of healing. Okay, so everyone's, everyone's seeing the common theme here, Diba. It's not, it's not a, a trick. trick. It's, there's many different gifts, one spirit, okay? Now watch this. All of these... So if we can bring everything down, all of these, watch this, are empowered. Are empowered by what? We could say the agent because he is the one. The agent, the Holy Spirit is the one empowering. This is the object, okay? And then the description of the Holy Spirit is uh, who, who, everyone sees that, who, apportions. Does someone have a different translation for this word apportion in verse 11? What's another word that, that is used there? What's another word? I'm looking at this word here. Does someone have a different word that's being used? Could we say distribute? Is, does anyone have a word distribute there or no? He gives them to each one. Okay. Is that verse 11? Is that, is that verse 11? Okay, so give. Yeah, so, so yeah, so this is a big word. Give. That, that's what it means. Give. Great. Distribute. It, you're distributing. You buy, you're handing it out. You're handing it out. You're giving a handout, okay? He's giving to each one, right? But it's as he wills. So what I want us to see here, Manga Kapatid, I, I want to get very practical here. What I want us to see here is that, and we've talked about this before, so this is not new. I think we talked about this in the operations manual. But the Holy Spirit, all believers, every one of us need to understand that the Holy Spirit cannot be manipulated. He's the one that gives us life. He's the one that equips us for the ministry. We cannot, in, in one sense, we are called the gifts are given to equip the saints, Ephesians 4, 17, or 16, 15, 16, 17. Um, but at the same time, those gifts are given. Those gifts are given, Diba. They're given uh, by the Holy Spirit. We do not choose our gifts. The Holy Spirit is the one who does this. And we cannot serve without 
utilizing those gifts that are given to us. And so people that don't understand this, number one, they'll maybe be choosing their own gift. Now, of course, our desires are in accordance. I don't wanna, I don't wanna minimize that, but I do, wanna, I do wanna emphasize the fact that the Holy Spirit is in control, God is in control, and he is equipping us to do what he's calling us to do. Okay, so again, as leaders, we need to be sharing this with our, our, our members, we also need to be helping them to thrive and to really identify. And, and later on in, in, one of the, in one of the classes, we're going to identify our spiritual gifts. But again, this is coming back to the Holy Spirit is the one empowering. It is the Holy Spirit who is empowering. Not, we're not empowering ourselves. The Holy Spirit is doing this. Now, I do want to draw your attention. Did you notice here how this phrase here, All of these are empowered by one and same spirit, Diba. Right? When we come back up here, it's the same God. So literally, if we're looking, the same God, it's this is a this is a synonym. Synonym. Does everyone understand that? Paul is, Paul is using these words interchangeably. Look up here. Uh, the same spirit, the same spirit, Diba. Right? So he could have also said the same spirit. So does everyone understand how this is a proof for the deity of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is equal with God. Is everyone tracking with me there? Everyone's tracking with me. So this is, this is a, a proof. So this would be, a, uh, this would be a, a Trinitarian proof text. This passage would be, here, this would be a Trinitarian proof text. So this would be a proof for the Holy Spirit, okay? This is not, the primary purpose of the text, the primary purpose of the text is to teach on the Holy Spirit. But in the background, the only way that this is true is if what is presupposed, what is the reality is that the Holy Spirit is God. And this becomes even stronger, Diba. In Ephesians 4, it's Christ who gives the gifts, Diba. But here it's the Holy Spirit who distributes. Well, who is it? <laughs> Do you see that? Is it, the, is it Christ or is it the Holy Spirit? Well, if, it's, if there's one God, yes. <laughs> in one sense, we could say Christ gives the gifts. In another sense, we could say the Holy Spirit because it's all one God. They're all working together. Everyone tracking with me? Every, everything making sense there? Okay, it's getting late. So let's, let's, let's move. We're going to move, we're gonna move uh, faster now because those were the two primary passages that we really wanted to go deep in. The rest are more basic. And we might not be able to get to all of them. Number A, the Holy Spirit empowers. Number one, he gives life. And number two, sorry, number two, <laughs> he equips for service. Next, we see the Holy Spirit sanctifies. The Holy Spirit sanctifies. This is to purify or to set apart. That is to make holy. So the Holy Spirit sanctifies us. Now, there's two components to this sanctification, okay? Let's go to, let's go first to, I'm actually going to go first to 1 Peter uh, chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2. To those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, according to the knowledge, the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for the obedience of Christ Jesus. What I want to highlight here is this sanctification of the Spirit. Okay? There are two truths that, we'll be, that we're going to look at. Number one is this is a, this is a truth. When we are brought into uh, union with Christ, the Holy Spirit not only gives us life, he sanctifies us. At the time of our justification, we are also sanctified. There's many more passages of Scripture. We don't have time to go there. 
But I want to emphasize there is a, at the time of our conversion, our profession of faith, we are sanctified. We are set apart by the Holy Spirit. The other thing is that we are devout, we are being sanctified. So we are being set apart. So we are not yet fully sanctified. We'll be fully sanctified when we're resurrected anew, we're in the new heavens and the new earth. But there is also this process by which we are. So another word for uh, sanctification uh, in, in the present tense, this is also referred to as being holy or set apart, okay? Holy or set apart, all right? So if we're looking at in the present, uh, uh, growing in holiness. Viva? Growing in holiness. Romans 6 refers to the fruit of righteousness for sanctification. Romans 6, fruit of righteousness leading to sanctification. So what I want us to see is again sanctification san sanctification is a is both a past tense at time of conversion, it's a present tense that is ongoing and will not be completed until we are resurrected. Okay? So the classic, which is what Pastor Noli brought up, the, the, the effect of the new life, uh, the, the effect of, of, of the new birth, is this growing in holiness or the, these fruits. And so let's go really quick to Galatians chapter 5. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. Watch this, okay? So the Holy Spirit both sanctifies us at conversion, at, uh, at, when we're given new life, new birth, when we're when he, he indwells us. But then there's this also this command to walk. Walk by the Spirit. If you are led, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The, the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, Fits of anger. Fits of anger is included right next to sorcery and idolatry. That, that's, that's rivalries, dissensions, divisions. So, I mean, some of these are big sins, some of these are small sins, but they're all coming from the works of the flesh, drunkenness, orgies, the things, and like these, I warned you as I warned you before, that those who do such things, look, we just, <laughs> look at this, we just looked at, we just looked at entering the kingdom of God, Diva. Right? Very similar, very similar to John 3. These works of the flesh are evidencing that we are not in the spirit. As Pastor Early said, the, the, the Holy Spirit is not dwelling within us. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. We're not so good at patience, Diva. We're, maybe we're not so good at kindness, Mahira. Gentleness, Mahira Talaga. For us men, so, Sobrag Mahira, uh, Mashado Mahira. Self-control. Against such there is no law. But those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So this is this is the fruits of the Spirit, but we could say that this is this here, Manga Kapate, this is we could say sanctification. Or we could say uh, growing in holiness or maturity. But what I want us to see here among the is that the Holy Spirit sanctifies. The fruits of the Spirit is the work of 
the Holy Spirit. So think about this. Look at this. Come, let's come back here. The key here, Manga Kapatid, is to walk by the Holy Spirit. If we walk by the Holy Spirit, we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. If we are led by the Holy Spirit, watch this. The Holy Spirit is producing these as we are led by him. Our job is to put to death the deeds of the flesh, to put to death those deeds. And the, the Holy Spirit is the one producing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. It's the fruit, right? It's not our fruit. It's the fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> the Spirit is the one doing the work. Does everyone understand what I'm saying there? Is everyone tracking? That's why, that's why our main statement here is the Holy Spirit sanctifies. He sanctifies one time when we are brought into uh, union with Christ, when he indwells us, and then he is making us holy. So, of course, we have a part to play. We are to walk with him. We are to submit to him. We are to be led by him. We are to be putting to death the deeds of the flesh. But he is the one producing the fruits of the Spirit in us. Hence, the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, the flesh is the one producing the works of the flesh. Okay, so it's 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 our job to be walking in step with the spirit, and the spirit will will produce those within us, and they will come out. Does everyone understand? Is is that making sense for everyone? If we try to do this, if if we mangakapatid, if we try to do these by our own power, you will never have love. If you do this by your own power, you will never have joy. If you do this by your own power, you will never have peace. You will never have patience. You will never have gentleness. You will never have self-control. You will never have kindness. If you do this by yourself, it is impossible. You want to know one thing that will cause these things to become big in your life? One thing, we talked about this in the study last night. If the gospel is big, these will become more pronounced. Because the gospel says you are a sinner that has been saved by unmerited grace. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It becomes a lot easier for the Spirit to produce love when, when we see ourselves as sinners that have offended God. It, it is easier for us to be kind when we see how God has been kind to us. It, it is easier for us to be patient when we see how God has been patient with us. It is easier for us to have peace, to show peace, when we realize that God has already made peace with us. It is easy for us to be gentle when we realize how gentle God has been with us. If the gospel is big, it is easier for the Spirit to produce these things. So this is something I, I'm going to always be coming back to. The gospel is not just for conversion. It is also for our sanctification. Um, we should be preaching, reminding ourselves of the gospel every day. And the Spirit will use those truths to create this love, this joy, this peace, this patience, this kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These, All of these things are... Notice there's no discipleship. Notice there's no... Magaling um, pastor, di ba? <laughs> That's not present. Those are not the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Ah, uh, you are such a talented speaker. Wala, di ba? You are such a talented guitar player. Wala. That's not the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is these things, these inward things. Of course, this will produce other stuff, but I want to, what I'm trying to get at Mount Kapitid, we often think of our sanctification, we often think of our spiritual maturity as those things that we do in church on Sunday. But our level of sanctification, the spirit that is producing in us, are these. Go ahead. Pastor Tim, Go ahead. Pastor Tim, can I ask, I call this a lazy question? Yeah. Can I ask 
I was just wondering, when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, is it during the, our acceptance to the Lord Jesus Christ or during the baptism? <laughs> because I was thinking of the Lord Jesus Christ he knew when he was baptized by John the Baptist, diba? then the Holy Spirit comes down. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I was thinking, when did the Holy Spirit comes to us? Was that during the time when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ or after baptism? No, so that, that, again, that would, that's a very debated question. And so the, uh, I'll give a brief answer, but I don't want to scare people just because it's a deep question. Um, I do want to first say this, uh, Kapitan, that um, there is a difference between the order of salvation and the history of salvation, okay? When I say the history of salvation, it's that God has worked in, in, in redemptive history, bringing about our salvation in unique ways that will never be reduplicated, okay? So there's only ever going to be one exodus, out of Egypt. There's only ever going to be one, one uh, exile in Babylon, Assyria, Babylon, and return, okay? There's only one Messiah in which after Jesus is baptized, the Holy Spirit comes upon him. That was, uh, that's, that's a, an act in the history of salvation. Now, it could be reduplicated, but it, but it might not. We don't, uh, we can't just say because it happened to Jesus, it will happen to us. Because number one, we're not the Messiah. Number two, when we're baptized, the Holy Spirit, I mean, God does not say, this is my beloved son. So there is a, what I'm trying to get is that there is a uniqueness to Jesus's activity. We also know in, in, in Pentecost, uh, they were waiting for the Holy Spirit to be sent. The Holy Spirit had not yet been sent. Okay. So that is the sending of the Holy Spirit to indwell us was again, a something unique in the, in the history of salvation. So in the old Testament, Although in order to have faith, there has to be this work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit did not indwell the Old Testament saints in the same way he does in the New Testament. Um, and so even in Acts, the ba, you have the sending of the Holy Spirit just to the Jews. And then there's, there's the sending of the Holy Spirit to the Gentiles. And actually the Gentiles come and they're like, oh, you have the baptism of, of John, but not yet Jesus. And then when when they have that baptism, the Holy Spirit comes upon them. But those are all events in the history of salvation. So people will say it's the history of salvation, but it's also for us today. And that's an interpretation, and it could be. What you see, though, is post-Pentecost, post once it's normative, it does seem to be that everything is instantaneous. So when, you, when the Holy Spirit opens our eyes, we believe, we repent. We, we have saving faith. We are immediately brought into union with Christ. It's my understanding that that is, at, at that moment, that's when the Holy Spirit indwells us. Um, in, in this last uh, age, this, this, this age of the new covenant, some people will take Jesus and, you know, the baptism as that's when the Holy Spirit comes. You know, I... The, the one thing I, I, I do wonder, Kapitan, though, is that the so U.S., sometimes they will withhold baptism for maybe five months while they learn. Does that mean the Holy Spirit does not involve them until they are baptized? I mean, when we exercise saving, what, once we are brought into union with Christ, all of the benefit, he, he sends the comforter immediately. And that's not in our baptism. Dibas, that's when we have faith in our heart. That's not even when we confess with our mouth. That's when we exercise faith in our heart. That's when we're brought into union with Christ. And that's, I believe, when the Spirit, when the Spirit is, seals us. So let's go to a passage of Scripture. Let's, let's go quickly. Let's just go to, um, let's go to, Ephes let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. So this will be the clearest example that it's not at baptism, but that it's at the time when we're brought into union with Christ, okay? Look at verses uh, 13. In him, in Christ, you also, when you heard the truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him. So you hear and you believe. It doesn't even say you confess. You hear and you believe. We're sealed. <laughs> 
by the whole promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. So it's more than even, it's this ceiling, and, and then he's, he's our guarantee. And so really, it seems to me that's when he is, he comes inside and he is the, he is the, he is the guarantee. He's the down payment. Uh, I think the guarantee, literally down payment. I thought this is uh, down payment. So if you have a down payment, divide, you already give money. So the Holy Spirit is already given to us. So I would say this is the clearest passage. And, and, and the way that we reconcile with Jesus' baptism, with, the, with the, ba the unique situation in Acts, it's because that's the history of salvation. And now we're in an age that salvation is here. We're in the age of the Messiah. We're in the age of the new covenant. Okay, so th that would be my answer to your, to your question. But competent, it's debated, and people have different views on this. I do think that it's problematic if the baptism is five or six months. You know, some people believe that once you've been baptized, you don't have to be rebaptized. So they, they're never rebaptized. Um, so does that mean that they never received the Holy Spirit? Um, so it's just, uh, I think this is the clearest example. Okay. Great question. Really good question. Okay. We are running out of time. So I'm going to end it. We're, we're going to go quickly here. Let, let's go along here. Um, Letter C, the Holy Spirit reveals. We don't have time to go to these passages, but I do want to say that he reveals God's word. And so in 2 Peter, that should be chapter 1. This should be 2 Peter, this should be, this should be, uh, this should be 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 to 21, not chapter 2. But, but the Holy Spirit reveals God's word. Okay, the Holy Spirit reveals God's word. And you can, you can investigate that passage on your own time. And then we, we've, already go, we've already exhausted Romans 8, 9 to 17. We've gone there already two other times. But in Romans 9, uh, 8, 9 to 17, we see that the Holy Spirit is indwelling us and also that he is leading us. And we saw that in Galatians 5, the, body, the Spirit is leading us. And so we say that within the category of the Spirit reveals is that he's revealing God's presence. He is actually present inside us. This is a benefit of the Holy Spirit. And that he is also revealing God's will. So as we are led, as we are led by the Spirit, he is revealing to us God's will. In this idea of the Holy Spirit re revealing things to us, he's revealing God's presence, and he is also revealing God's will as he leads us. Okay, and so I would just refer you to... to to study Romans chapter 8, verses 9 to 17. We've, again, we've had that for, for two weeks now. And next, uh, number four, he teaches and illumines us. He teaches and illumines us. But let's just go here really quick. I just want to go here really quick. Let's go to, to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. The natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. He is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Uh, I mean, the spiritual person judges all things, but it, himself to be judged by no one. Who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And so here, um, the emphasis here is upon the natural man does not understand spiritual truth. But if we are, if, if we have the Spirit, the Spirit is teaching us spiritual truths. So that's why someone who is an unbeliever oftentimes will never understand the Word of God. Because this is folly, this is folly to him. When he reads the Word of God, all it does is confirm him in his sin. It takes the work of the Holy Spirit to open his heart to receive the gospel, to receive the Word of God. This is very powerful to the, to number one, the work of the Spirit in teaching. Illumin this is illumination. We refer to this as teaching or illumination. But this also speaks to the condition of mankind. The natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. He is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. A, a, a natural fleshly person cannot understand the word of God, okay? 
it takes the work of God to open his heart. Okay, so this is why it's so important that when we're sharing the gospel or we're working with someone, it's not just our, it's not just our persuasion. It's not just our track. It's not just our ability to, to, to make the deal to seal the deal. We share the word of God. We share the gospel. And it's the Holy Spirit that opens the heart, that opens the mind to spiritual truths. And then the person repents and clings to Jesus in faith. Okay, but this is the work of the Holy Spirit in revealing. Okay, we are almost finished. I do appreciate your, your patience and time. We already went here. So the Holy Spirit seals us. So this is part of the, uh, of the, of what the Holy Spirit reveals to us. Okay, when, I, when I'm talking about revealing, I'm again referring to the Holy Spirit revealing God to us. There's different things. So he, he gives us truth here. He seals us. The Holy Spirit seals us, uh, Ephesians 1.13. Um, we are sealed forever. This is also an assurance, Manga Kapitan. You can add this passage to our assurances passage uh, from chapter 2. When we have the Holy Spirit, we have the down payment. God, God has given us a down payment, and he's gonna he's gonna want to he's gonna want to give the rest of the inheritance to us. So we already have the down payment in the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is our down payment. We are sealed until the it's day. It's a guarantee. Guarantee. It's a guarantee. Guarantee. One hundred percent guarantee. Your uh, 100% rate of, ret uh, a, a rate of return. You are going to get a return on your investment. Return on investment, cigarado. And then lastly, we don't have time to go there, although we spoke about this from our operations manual, so I will refer you to the video from IT operations manual in Ephesians chapter 4. The Spirit unifies us. So we have a bond of peace in the Spirit. But the spirit is also called the spirit of truth, and we're called to speak. Uh, we're called to to speak the truth in love. So unification, unifying the spirit unifies us, but it's unifying us around truth. Okay, truth is the highest ideal, and the spirit unifies us all together in truth. So so relationship is within the context of truth. I always want to emphasize that because. Um, Americans, Americans have the problem of always giving the truth, but sometimes the relationship suffers. <laughs> Americans will give the truth, but the relationship suffers because they're not always speaking it in love. Uh, if, if I could say this in, in love and care, sometimes Filipinos, the relationship is always kept, but sometimes truth could suffer. Okay, so in, in Philippine context, sometimes truth suffers. In American context, relationship suffers. <laughs> so, so we each have a problem. Uh, truth in relationship. Truth in relationship. And it's, it's, all, it's all cohered together, brought together by the Holy Spirit. So God is in the center, and God is a God of, of, of peace, of truth. Uh, it is the Spirit of God who unifies us. And so that is the PowerPoint. So I just do want to go back. The Holy Spirit empowers. He gives life. He equips us for ministry. The Holy Spirit sanctifies. The Holy Spirit reveals. He reveals the Word of God. He reveals uh, uh, the will of God. He leads us. He seals us. He teaches and illuminates us. And he unifies us, Mangakapatid. The work of the Holy Spirit, although the Holy Spirit sometimes is cast aside, the Holy Spirit is central, must be center, central in our ministry, in our families, in our own lives. Uh, he is the means by which uh, God's will is carried out. The one, the one category that I did not include here, although it's in, implied, is that the Holy Spirit, and I should have included this, please forgive me, is the Holy Spirit exposes sin. So the Holy Spirit also convicts of sin. So if you want to add an E, that could also be under Revelation. But I, I do want to say I apologize for that. The Holy Spirit is the one who convicts the world of sin. And that is a big, that is a big component. I do believe it's emphasized in I-Team. 
So you will see that as you study. But I do want to emphasize that the Holy Spirit also convicts of sin. You'll see that it's, he's also the comforter. He's the, the paracalasis. So there's a lot of other things that are not in this PowerPoint that you can study in your IT. But um, I just want to I just want to close in uh, in closing. I do want to give the assignment for next week, and that's the uh, answer uh, questions for chapter six. Meet with your small group and prepare any questions that you may have. You can discuss them in your small group or with us. But I I do want to emphasize mga kapatid and, and and the churches here are much better than in the U.S. So. Uh, Filipinos are, are, are much better in, in emphasizing the work of the Spirit, but Talaga, I, I do want us to, th you know, we, we, we think about the Holy Spirit in, in worship. We ask the Holy Spirit to come into our presence, but I, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit to be central in your sanctification. I want you to, I want the Holy Spirit to be central in your proclamation of the gospel. And what I mean by that is that it's the Holy Spirit that gives life. It's the Holy Spirit that exposes sin. You cannot do that. Your job, you preach the gospel, let the Holy Spirit do that. In sanctification, your job is to be led by the Holy Spirit, and you let the Holy Spirit work those hard, those hard fruits of the Spirit that are very mahira to, 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 to come to reality. But when they do, when they do, Mama Kapatid, it the fruit is so tasty. The fruit is so tasty. It's so... Uh, just imagine yellow mango. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit is such a beautiful thing. When, when, when people see us exercising the fruits of the Spirit, they will say, Sigurado, there is a difference with, that, with that, those people. I want to be involved in Lord's Harvest. I want to be involved uh, in, in, in the church in Calvary. I, I'm not, I, I, I forget the name of the church. Maybe it's Grace. Um, but... People will see your church. They will see a difference in, in uh, Southern Leyte they will, with Pastor Jude Olaibar and then also with, um, with, with other churches. They will see a difference in our churches, Mother Kapatid. Cigarado, when they see the, fruit of the, the fruits of the Spirit, they will want to come and taste. And, and uh, that is the greatest, that is the greatest, uh, the greatest thing we can share with those people around us is being that, that light and salt. Um, any comments or questions? I know it's late. I appreciate you going. This was a longer lesson. Um, any comments or questions before we close in prayer? In sharing the gospel, the gospel should be, should be clear. The, 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 the full story of the gospel should be shared yeah. in, in, uh, to the person. It's not only the, the giving up of Christ's bad uh, self for our sins, but the entire gospel, the entire, the entire story. Yeah, we, we need to be very clear on the gospel, clear on sin, what sin is, who Jesus is, what he's done for us. But, but, we, but don't feel pressured if you are turned down. Instead of trying to convince, my recommendation, according to our study, you should spend more time in prayer. <laughs> Pray that the Spirit would give life. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? That's... Our job is to proclaim the gospel. It's the Spirit's job to give life. In sanctification, it's our job to submit to the will of God. It's our job to read the word of God. It's our job to, to re repent of our sin, to be led by the Spirit. The Spirit will produce the fruit. So, so again, looking at these truths, this helps us to focus on what we need to do and let God do what he will do. When it comes to the equipping, the Spirit will reveal His gift to you. If you are being stressed, if someone is stressing, you need to be this spiritual gift and you don't feel comfortable, maybe that's not your gift. The Spirit will reveal it. <laughs> he reveals. Okay? Um, and that doesn't minimize that maybe sometimes we're lazy and we need to be pushed. Fair enough. You know, um, but we need to be dependent more upon the Spirit and really led by Him. I think, Mother Kapitan, we, we, we all want our way, and it's very easy to try to lead the Holy Spirit. And we need to let the Holy Spirit lead us. We need to let God lead us. That is, that is the hard, that is the hard one, uh, to be led, not to lead.
Um, any other comments or, or thoughts or questions? I don't want to take anyone out. I, I don't want to, to leave anyone else out. Does anyone else want to make a comment or question? Okay, let's close in prayer. Pastor Henry, can you close us in prayer? Uh, Father God, we thank you for revealing to us uh, the other part of yourself, the other, uh, the other God who is the Holy Spirit, which you have provided to us when we came to know and accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Father, we know in, there are so much things to learn who you are through the Holy Spirit, but from our uh, small, limited mind, slowly we can, you will reveal to us as we go along in our journey here on earth. Father, we thank you that you have guaranteed our life by putting the Holy Spirit, by indwelling of, your, of the Holy Spirit in us. We are saved and has a place in eternity with you in heaven. Thank you, Father, for this evening. Uh, we, may you provide us a good rest and restore our energy tonight for tomorrow is another day where we can work uh, in, uh, we can work and walk, walk together with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.